Hey everyone, welcome back to the Tastyworks tutorial series. In today's video, we're gonna learn how to buy and sell stock on the Tastyworks desktop platform. Now, before I actually jump into the tutorial, if you guys are already planning on opening a Tastyworks account and wanna support the channel, please use my link down below and help me out a little bit. Now, getting back to the actual video, I will tell you there are many different ways to trade stock in this platform. And honestly, pretty much anywhere you see a bid or an asking price, if you click on that number, it's gonna automatically generate an order ticket for you. So for example, if we look on my side panel right here, you can see I currently have a watch list called Options. Right there you can see symbols like Facebook, SoFi, Micron, Palantir, and to the right of that you can see the current bid and asking price for that particular stock. So for example, if we look at Facebook up there, you can see the current bid ask is 332.40 by 332.60. If I wanted to create an order ticket to buy Facebook right now, I could click on the current asking price, 332.60. If I wanted to sell some Facebook stock or short the stock, I could click on the bid price. So again, you can click on the ask to buy, the bid to sell. So let's say in this example, I wanted to buy 100 shares of Facebook and I wanted to do so at the current price. All we have to do is go ahead and click on the current asking price, 332.60. From there, you can see on the right hand side, it automatically changes to the current page I was looking at. In this case, it's the option chain for Facebook. But right below that, you can see an open order ticket to buy the stock. Reading that order ticket from left to right, it says I wanna buy 100 shares of Facebook at 332.60. I'm using a limit order and that order is good for the day. Now, like any other platform, you can change these things very, very easily. If I wanted to short the stock instead of buy the stock, I could actually just come down here to the order ticket and flip this from buy to sell. If you see the right of that, you will also see the quantity changes. If you're shorting the stock, you're gonna see a negative number there. If you're buying the stock, you're gonna see a positive number there. If we wanted to put in a buy order to buy, let's say 50 shares, we could flip it back over to buy. We'll double click on this number and we'll just type in 50. If I also only wanted to buy these shares, if it dropped down to let's say 320 bucks a share, we could go ahead and double click on the price right here in the middle and drop it down to 320. Since it is a limit order, what I'm saying is I only wanna buy these shares of Facebook if I can get it for 320 or better. Now, all I'm doing is describing a limit order and you can see that the order type over here is already marked as a limit order. If I wanted to change that for some reason, let's say I wanted to make it a market order, which would mean, hey, I don't necessarily care about what price I get filled at, I just wanna get filled right this very second as soon as I possibly can. If I wanted to use a market order, I could just go ahead and click on that word limit there and change it to a market order. You're gonna see that as soon as I clicked on market, the price box disappears because we're no longer specifying a price. We're basically saying we wanna get these shares of Facebook as soon as we possibly can, we'll take whatever the current price is. Now it's important to keep in mind that market orders will only be good for the regular market session, so you will not be able to put this in for the extended session or the pre and post market. To trade in the pre and post market, we'd have to change this back from a market order to a limit order. We need to specify a price just like we did before, so let's say 320 in this case. And if we want it to be good for the pre and post market, we would also have to change the time in force. So look on the far right hand side over here. Right now, the time in force is currently a day order, which means I just want this good for the day, 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time. That'd be the standard regular market hours. If I wanted this good for the pre and post market as well, I would go ahead and click on that and change it to an EXT order. Tastyworks pre and post market trading is also far more limited than, uh, than other brokerage firms out there. It's gonna start at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time and end at 5 p.m. Eastern time. But if you do want to trade during those hours, you just need to change the time and force from a day order to an EXT order. Now the other time and force options there, if we go ahead and click on it for a second, you're going to see GTC, which stands for good until canceled. That means I want this order good every single day from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. And again, I want to try and get this filled every single day. If I can't buy Facebook today for 320, try again tomorrow. Doesn't happen tomorrow, try again the next day and the next day and so on until it either fills or until I cancel it. Now GTD stands for good till date. If we go ahead and click on that, you're gonna see a little calendar shows up. So this would be used if, if I wanna try and buy Facebook for 320, but let's say I only want this order good for, let's say five days. So I wanna click on this little calendar icon. We're gonna go five days out in time to the 17th. So what we're saying is we do wanna buy Facebook, but if it doesn't happen by January 17th, just go ahead and cancel this order for me. Now you'll also notice here, if we click on order type, you also have the ability to use stop market orders and stop limit orders but I will say these are gonna be typically used to close out of a position you already hold, whether that be a long or a short position, basically to stop your losses. That's what most people will typically use this for to protect themselves if things go wrong. Now I'll also mention that you guys do have the ability to create bracket orders and you're gonna see a button down here called bracket. 
which if you click on that, it does bring up a pop-up window, which allows you to create an OCO bracket order. I am not gonna talk about that in today's video. I will link the video down below. I've already created a video about how to create OCO brackets in Tastyworks. So go ahead and check that video after this if you guys wanna learn more about it. But moving on from here, if I go ahead and exit out of that, if I actually wanted to submit this order, I could always come down here to the review and send button. Just go ahead and click on that. From there, it gives me a little confirmation screen saying, hey, are you sure you actually wanna do this? It's gonna cost you about 16 grand. If I did, I would simply hit send order down below. Now, since I don't actually wanna do that, we'll go ahead and hit clear order over here. Now, moving off of that, you can also look at the very top of your page here. You see, I currently have Facebook up here, but let's say I wanted to trade, I don't know, Netflix. So we'll go ahead and type in Netflix up here. NFLX, hit enter on the keyboard. You'll notice up at the top, I also have a current bid and a current ask. So if I click on one of those numbers, it's gonna auto generate an order ticket down below exactly like before. This is exactly the same as the previous example, so I'm not gonna spend any more time on it. Just keep in mind that anytime you click on the current asking price, you're gonna generate a buy ticket. Anytime you click on a bid price, you're gonna generate a sell ticket. Now moving off of that, there are a few other ways we can place trades in here. And honestly, one of the more popular ones is gonna be from the grid page. So come up here to where it says trade mode. I want you to come over to the right and click on grid for me. From there, you can see a chart for Palantir in this case. If we wanted to change the symbol, we just need to click in this little search box, type in the symbol we wanna to go to. So let's just say uh, SPY in this case, hit enter on the keyboard. From there, you can see I'm now looking at a one year day chart for SPY in this case. And down below, I've got my order ticket. I'm gonna fill this thing out almost exactly like before. Right here, you can see I'm generating an order ticket to buy to open 100 shares of stock. If I only wanted to buy two shares, I could go ahead and highlight this, type in two. If I only wanted to buy this stock, if it went down to, let's say 465, and excuse me, this ETF, I'll go ahead and throw in 465 right there. And just like before, if I actually wanted to place this, I would simply hit review down here. Now, something different about this one is the ability to use this offset to kind of quickly help you make an order ticket. So let's say I wanted to put in a limit order five cents below the current price for the SPY. I could actually just click on this and change the offset to five cents. Now you notice if I unlock this, the limit order is going to be five cents below the last traded price for SPY. So right here, you can see the price that went in there is 4772, and you can see the current ask is 4777. So five cents below the current asking price. If I were to change this offset from five cents to let's say 25 cents, you can now see the current price that goes in my limit box is 25 cents below the asking price. But other than that, this is exactly the same as the previous example, could be another good alternative to place equity trades in here. Now the last one I'll show you is the active page. So we're gonna go ahead and click on active up here. This is another page that allows you to trade and probably allow you to trade much more quickly than our previous examples. Now, just like I already mentioned, anytime you click on the asking price or the bid price, that's how you're gonna enter order tickets on here. On the left-hand side over here is how you change the order types, whether it be a limit order or a market order, or if you wanna change the time and force box right here, or change the quantity of shares that you're buying. On the right hand side, you can see all of my current equities and you can see the current bid and ask price. If I were to say I wanted to buy some shares of Boeing, I can see my Boeing position right here. I could click on the asking price and you can see I'm generating an order ticket to buy 100 shares at the current limit price to 17.40. Now the active page is a little bit more confusing, a little bit more in depth. So I'm actually gonna make a completely separate video that's much more in depth than this one, specifically about the active page. But this is a little glimpse of what you can do in here. Now, honestly, that is everything you guys are gonna to need to know right now to buy and sell stock for yourself on the Tastyworks platform. If I did miss anything or you guys have any additional questions at all, please let me know down below. Also, if you guys would like to support the channel and plan on opening a Tastyworks account already, please use my link down below in the description. It really helps out a lot. But that wraps things up for today's video. I hope you guys all have an amazing rest of your week and I'll see you on the next video.